Hi guys, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers and it is 8 o'clock on a Sunday evening. So this is another tutorial. Um, you'll notice that my screen looks a little bit odd and that is because I have created a makeshift paint box here. So we're going to use that for part of the video and then I will move it out the way. All right, so let me take one second and refresh my screen to be sure that we're transmitting and say hi to some folks. So hang on just one hot second. So the card, the it's not a card at all, it's a box. The box that you're looking at right now on the screen is one of the new Baker's boxes um, in the new catalog. Hi Amy, hi Marianne and Jean, and I saw Karen and Donna and Mary. How are y'all tonight? Hi Fran, glad you could join me. Um, appreciate that very much. Hi Patricia. So I had a request, let me move this out of the, out of the, uh, shadow there for a second. I had a request from one of my friends to show how to color the new Baker's boxes with the spritzer. Now I'm just going to tell you straight up the one that you're looking at on screen is the one and only Baker's box I have ever covered. And it turned out okay but I tell you that <laughs> for expectation management. Hi Tara, nice to see you. Hi Holly. Hi Lenny, glad to see you tonight. Hi Shirley. Um, I tell you that just for expectation management in that I don't have a whole lot of experience coloring it and so we're gonna we're gonna learn together here tonight um, and I, I hope it works out hey Karen thank you and Karen Karen and Karen and Barbara thank you for joining I appreciate you all right so this box and I'm gonna have a hard time looking at a whole bunch of comments at the same time hey Jean and Sharon, I appreciate you coming on, and hi Donna. Um, because the paint box, my little paint box here, is kind of in the way. So it should get better once we get done with this part. Regardless, or as we like to say in the military, irregardless, um, this is a baker's box, and I have decorated this one for fall using the new Country Home set. So it's the Country Home stamp set and um, the tin tile dynamic teeth I used for this one. I colored the box with a combination of uh, Mango Melody and um, shoot fire, pumpkin pie. And we're gonna do that again tonight, but I am going to maybe change up a little bit. And we're going to make a Halloween theme because my friend is going to do Halloween boxes and so I thought I'd try to give her a couple of ideas. But I'll tell you on the blog how to, um, thank you Alicia and Jean, I appreciate that. I'll tell you on the blog how we did this. Um, it's really quite simple. I took some crumb cake cardstock and I cut four panels uh, and they are one and seven eighths by four inches long, one and seven eighths by four inches. And I embossed them in the tin tile teeth and then I used a a sponge wedge and lightly sponged it with uh, soft suede and then I just um, matted it on some Cajun craze with liquid glue and then added it to the sides and I will show you how we did this little cutout part right there um, and then the top just has some of the new braided linen or braided twine and a billy bow and another small bow plus a sentiment. Like I said, I will tell you all of these uh, dimensions and everything on the blog tomorrow, but we're going to make a slightly different box for this evening. You can see how it colors. So let me set this aside so it doesn't get um, sprayed because it doesn't need to be sprayed again. And I'm gonna pull out one of the new Baker's boxes and they come totally flat, which does assist in your spraying endeavors. All right, guys, I'm just going to go straight up. This is a mess, all right? So I have this weird box that I've cut down so that I don't have uh, ink spray all over the place. Hi, Anne. Hi, Denise. Um, so I have two mis um, misters from Stampin' Up! And what I did is I filled... I, I, you can see this one. This one is... Uh, this one is Mango Melody, and this one is the Pumpkin Pie. You can only tell that sort of because of the, the difference um, in the colors. But what I did is I filled it to about here, and I did half water and half alcohol. 
Uh, this one I just is just sprayed out of. And then I used like 40 drops of reinker. Now that sounds like a lot, and it's gonna look really, really, um, it's gonna look really, really, really dark, and then it's it it dries lighter. So um, what I decided to do, what I did when I played with it, was I just sprayed it, and I saw what it did, and then if I wanted it darker, I sprayed it some more. And I did a little tamping with my paper towel, and I mostly just played with it. The good news is, is this acetate for the window does clean pretty easily, so I am not going to mask it off. This isn't like real. So anyway, I'm going to try to figure out which one is which. We'll just do a quick spray on the, just be sure I'm doing the right one. That looks like Mango Melody. And this one should be Pumpkin Pie, sure enough. So you want to get a couple of good spritz. I'm going to start with the Mango Melody. Just give it a good shake. Yes, um, Karen, this is actually, my spray booth right here is in fact a Stampin' Up! shipping box. So it does work pretty well. And I've lined it with some paper and some paper towels because you can never really have too much lining. So I'm just going to spritz like that. And that's the Mango Melody. And then I'm gonna pull out the, hi Denise. Then I'm gonna pull out my pumpkin pie and I'm gonna, like that. Now because it's got alcohol in it, it sprays up pretty good and dries pretty quickly. And you can see it kind of do some weird stuff, which actually isn't bad. I don't mind that a bit. But what I'm gonna do is just do a little bit of daubing on it. We're playing now, folks. Mary doesn't know what she's doing. She's just playing. And I'll give this a little wipe. It's called insurance, just in case. Okay. And then I'm going to dig my heat tool out. I'm not even, I am so glad you can't actually see my stamping area because it is a hot mess. And I'm just going to dry it on the low speed a little bit. And when I made the first one, I didn't dry it. I just let it kind of do its thing. I'm going to give that another spritz. I've got some, I didn't really cover right there very good. So let's give that a little color, a little color. I have just sprayed everywhere but on the box. Awesome. All right, and give it a little pumpkin pie, pumpkin pie. Right, there we go. All right, so, again, we'll just wipe that off a little bit. It did clean pretty good when I did the first one, but, you know, tidy is as tidy does. So let's try that again. Amy, the <laughs> yeah, right, Amy, come on, man. You're just full of it. Okay, so this is drying, drying pretty quickly. That, um, being partially alcohol based, the spray does dry pretty quickly actually. I'm just helping it along so that we aren't here until, you know, midnight. Because Mary doesn't do midnight very good. Okay. I actually kind of like that little mottled look, don't you? I think that's kind of cool. And I am going to... Oh, you know, Mary, you are absolutely correct about that. Um, and I'm not going to say that I have sprayed myself, but yeah, I did. Okay. I'm just going to add a little more. Like I said, it's going to dry darker, or lighter, I'm sorry, than it is here. And I'll tell you what else I'm going to do on this one. I'm gonna add some more pumpkin pie ink refill here because I wanna see some darker. Don't ask me how much this is. About 10 more drops. But it's 10 more drops in just a very small amount of liquid. So here's another tip. Always put the sprayer back on before you shake it. Yeah, yeah, trust me. 
And we'll just give that a little spritz. Ooh, I kind of like that, especially for a Halloween project. Ooh, spooky. That's spooky. All right, now I'm going to try some, hey, Patricia. Uh, here we go, let's do a little drying on the low speed. You can see that's gonna kind of spread it out a little bit, which is fine. A little dab to help it along. Obviously, if you're doing this on your own, you can you can let it dry like that and keep that kind of mottled look, which I might actually do if I was doing it on my on my own some. But we're not, so let's let's get it speeded up here a little bit. And actually, we're going to cover a lot of it with paper, so that won't really matter. But you can see you could make this almost anything you wanted it to be. And obviously there are other ways that you could color these boxes. You could sponge, you could use your alcohol markers, your blends. Um, you could stamp. Recommend you do it while it's flat like this. <laughs> like, duh, right? <laughs> there you are right, it looks a little bit like blood splatters. There was a, a pumpkin killed tonight in Atlanta with a mister and a Stampin' Up! heat tool set to low. Okay. Now I'm going to show you another little trick um, I learned. I have another spritzer and it's got straight up alcohol in it. And I'm going to take the frost white shimmer paint and I'm going to, I shook it. You probably noticed me shooking it. I'm going to just take the little dauber hoo-ha and dip it in there and then dip it in the alcohol. I'm going to do that like twice. And then I'm going to close that and give it a good shake. And I don't know that you can tell, but it has made it the liquid is um, cloudy now, so it's it's got plenty of shimmer in it. And you'll actually see this technique. I just made a card for next week that I painted. Oh, let me make sure that's aimed at the right place. Some farmhouse elements. I colored them and then I spritzed them with some of this shimmer paint spritzer. Okay, now. It's real hard to see it. I'm sure it's, I'll bet you, I'll bet you it's nigh on impossible to see it on camera that it has shimmer, but it does. It do, it do. Hi, Pam. Yes, that is what it is. It's isopropyl alcohol. 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Good news is this stuff is cheap, 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 and it's fun to play with. Okay, so we're just going to get this dried up here a little bit. And then I'm going to have to move my paint box out of the way so that we can decorate this little bit. But I do want it dry, otherwise I will have ink everywhere, every, ever, ever, everywhere. So it looks like Florence has moved along. I'm glad, and if any of you were in the har in the way, I hope you made it through safely. I know a couple of my friends were not on the coast, but certainly in the way of the rain, and I, I got some word that things had gone okay, so that's good news. Um, what a mess. I, I hope everybody is all right. And I know there was also rain in, uh, on the other coast, we have we had hurricanes in Hawaii as well. So we got a bit of a pickle going on here, Bob. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. I like that. You know what would be a cool color combination here, you guys? I just thought of this. If you took crumb cake ink and sponged the whole thing in crumb cake, and then took like soft suede. A soft suede anchor and put it in the mister and spritzed it. I'll bet it would end up looking like leather. 
I bet it would, I bet it would, I bet it would. Okay, that is dry. Yeah, it does have a nice little shimmer. It's very, it's really kind of pretty. It's not, it's not in your face, but it's definitely there. And obviously you can kind of keep, just pile it on and layer it up. Okay, so hang on guys, I'm gonna try to do this without joggling everything. Hang on. Okay. All right, now let's get some grid paper. Because what is, what is the world without the grid paper? Six days, huh? Wow. They're, pro they're probably half excited and half bumming because I'm betting they have to make that up at the other end. All right, let me get some stuff out the way, you guys. I'm sorry. My place is such a mess. I just, I can't even tell you. I cannot even tell you. And I just made it worse with that. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to wipe that off a little better. See, that does come off pretty good. There we go. Okay. Now, the lesson that I learned making the first one is you want to get good creases going before you put this little bugger together. So we're going to just get everything folded and folded and folded. Don't know why I keep saying and folded because I think you can see that's what I'm doing. Also, I have discovered I'm talking weird. Don't know why. Okay, there we go. And one more. And then these are the, the flaps for the lid. Okay, and then we're going to employ some glue dots to put this little bugger together. Like, like so. Ready? And, all right. I, fe that, I felt that need to do that. Not that I was ever a cheerleader, trust me. That would not have been good. Nobody wanted to see that. Okay, so I'm just taking some glue dots. This little doha right here folds down across these flaps. So I'm going to fold this in like this and I'm going to put a glue dot on each of these corners to help hold it in place like this. Okay, and then give it a good squish, a good squish right there like that. And then I'll put a glue dot on the inside corners of these two flaps. Oh, college. Good point. I guess they'll, uh, I guess they'll just get it all in, won't they? It's been so long since I was in college, I don't remember how that works. Okay, so then I've got, I've got my glue dots. You can see them right there on the corners. And I'm just going to pick this up and get everything lined and then let the glue dot do its job and hold the box together. And then it just folds up like that. Now, just so you know, these are not very tall, okay? Um, they're only like two inches and an eighth. So you're gonna have a pretty small cupcake or some big cookies that you would stack up or some candies or whatever, but they're a good size so that you don't have to put like seven. You ever see those big ginormous boxes and they're beautiful and they're wonderful and then you have to put like seven dozen cookies in them. This way you can put about three cookies and a little bit of tissue and you're good to go and you can make them fast and you can get them out the door. All right, so now we're going to decorate it. Remember I used crumb cake? Uh, yes, a donut would be perfect. Yes, it would. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Patricia. I think this turned out very cute. Uh, so let me show you how we're going to make the, we're gonna decorate it a little bit. Now, the first one, as if you'll recall, I made in a fall theme, but this one I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna play a little bit and do a little bit of a Halloween-y theme. Halloween-y. 
because that is coming up and why not? So what I have done is I have cut four pieces of basic black cardstock at two inches by four and one eighth. And then I cut four pieces of Toil and Trouble DSP in one and seven eighths by four. And we're just going to mat those up with some liquid glue right quick, okay? So hang on while we pretty goody boxes for Thanksgiving. Yes, ma'am, they would. That's That was kind of the thought here for this one, would be for Thanksgiving. All right. One of these days, I am going to make a project with this frog paper. I don't know what yet, but I'm going to because it's so freaking cute. I just love those little guys. I just love those little guys. Okay, so let's just ink these up or glue them up and glue them to our basic black mats. Obviously, you can see I'm going for an uber scary witch theme here. Now, just so you know, uh, once again, I have not made this one. So, we're playing, playing by ear here, baby, playing by ear. So, when I got ready, I just thought, well, you know what? Let's go Halloween. Let's go witches. Let's go witches hats. And so, I just cut some things with the um, Cauldron Bubble stamp set and the Toil and Trouble DSP and the Cauldron Framelits. Did you know that several of the Cauldron Framelits actually fit the images in the DSP? Mm, specifically, one of the witch figures and the hats, which is very, very handy because I actually cut out a witch and hat. Um, and I cut a broom that I stamped. And I've got a couple of spider webs. So once I get these made and onto the box, we're going to decorate the top. I thought what I would do today is I'm gonna I'm going to use ribbon around the outside edge and a bow and then decorate the top as opposed to putting ribbon around like a present. I thought we would try something a little different because <laughs> I'm so clever. Okay, now we have our panels. We'll just glue them to the sides, and I am going to um, not lay that down like that. I'm going to open this up because it's a little easier to glue, and make sure that my paper is right side up because it really, it would probably be okay, but people would be like, I wonder why in the world she glued all those witches hats on upside down and they'd say well because she's goofy probably and they'd be right okay so there we go so you guys next weekend guess what next weekend is next weekend is the Amy's Ink and Crew retreat in the mountains of Blue Ridge Georgia at Skyview Mountain Cottage and it is gonna be fun. And we're gonna eat good. I'm leaving the diet in Atlanta when I leave here on Friday morning. And we're gonna have demonstrations and we're gonna have food. I probably mentioned food. And we're gonna have make and takes and we're gonna to go to Ella J. Did I do that right side up? Yes. And we're gonna to go to Ella J. And then, and then we're gonna be exhausted because we're gonna have so much fun retreating that we're going to have to come home to rest but that's okay I think it's gonna be awesome there's gonna be 11 of us during the day and I think it's gonna be so fun hopefully it will be so much fun that it becomes an annual occurrence and we've got folks from Amy's crew and from my crew coming it's gonna be fun okay let me show you how I did the front of this it is so hard I hope you are paying attention okay so what I did is I laid the panel on the front. And then with my writing utensil, I marked the center of the little opening doodah. With me so far? I know. And then I took my, uh, did I take that one? Yes, did I take that one? Yes, I did. See, this is a three quarter inch half circle. So I took my three quarter inch punch and I slid it in and I just kind of eyeballed halfway down the punch and there's my mark. Do you see it? 
See my mark right there? Pretty much in the center, like that. And then I give it a good squeeze, and bing, bada boom, I have a, a hole opening. Okay, easy and also peasy. Yeah, Ella J, it's in the North Georgia mountains, exactly. And it ought to be, this ought to be a really good time of year because we should have changing trees and apples. Maybe it's time for apples. I think we're gonna have to have apples. I'm gonna go get um, some apple cider. Ooh, apple cider sounds good. Okay, so we're just using some glue, a little bit of glue, and we'll add this on here like this. Yes, if you just, um, you can Google Skyview Mountain Cottage and see all about it. It's kind of fun because it was purpose built for crafting. So they have all kinds of beds. Hi, Aaliyah. They have all kinds of beds and they've got a whole crafting room with tables and ot lights and they've got big shots and all sorts of tools to help folks out. Um, so, so I think it's gonna be quite, quite a good thing. And we decided to go crazy and pay for catering. So we don't even have to cook, you guys. Now, I'm going to take some of this ribbon right here. This is the new, um, black glittered organdy ribbon and I love it because it has wire in the edges which makes it extraordinarily easy to so now you guys you know I'm totally winging it now right okay this is winging time it's winging time so I've just done a rough measure and I'm gonna take a glue dot and put it on the end of my ribbon, and I'm gonna put it right about there. And then I'm gonna take another glue dot, and I'm going to give it a pull, make sure I'm straight all around. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And put another glue dot. And you'll see I'm putting this in the middle, so it probably, will be a good idea for me to put a ribbon of some sort, like a bow even, one could even say a bow. There we go. All right, woohoo, no cooking and no dishes all weekend. Okay. Nice, 100 degrees in Las Vegas. You can have that, you can have that. You can have that. All right, now let's go ahead and make a quick bow. Um, do you guys have bow easies? I'm going to, I'm going to show you how I, I learned, almost learned how to use this. This is a bow easy. My friend Sue Prather, she, uh, introduced me to this and, uh, it's easy once you figure it out. Until you figure it out, it's a little bit like bow hard, but it, that could just be me. So we're going to make a bow. I think we'll make a bow about that big. So you can see, you can make bows with, this is the size of the loop here that we're gonna have. So you can have little tiny bows, little, little tiny bows, little bit bigger bows, ginormous bows. It's, it's actually kind of handy. We're going to go with a medium sized bow right here. So all you do is you leave yourself about four inches on that end and you wrap around however many times you want loops. So we're gonna do you know what would be cool? There's a double bow. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna go crazy, you guys. I don't normally do this. I'm gonna do double loop, and then you cut off the end. Okay. And then you take the loop end, the end that you just cut, and you go down through that hole that is left there. You can get these on Amazon, you guys. And then you come back up through the gap, and this is the trick. Whichever way you wound your ribbon, you have to take this end back through that loop, like that. And then unhook it there, and then kind of pull it, move out the lay box, pull it like that. And that should make us a little bow. So here's the trick that I figured out finally. You're working on this side, but this is actually the back of the bow. 
the pretty side of the bow is the other side. So I try to get it kind of straight before I pull it off of the bow easy. Almost like a fork bow, exactly, exactly. Okay, here we go. Alrighty, and then I'm gonna pull these apart. I just thought this double bow seemed spookier. So much spookier. Actually, this looks like an Elvira bow. You know, kind of spooky, but not. There was nothing scary about Elvira. Do you guys remember Elvira? Elvira, not that one. That's not the one. Okay, and then we're just going to put him there. And I'm gonna actually pick him up and slide this a little bit. See, when you're making on the fly, you have to kind of adjust. Be ready for adjustments, people. Flexibility is the key to modern air power. There we go. And I'm only doing that because I want to keep some kind of lengthy tails. Okay, so that's, that's still fine. I'm going to take another glue dot. And we're going to put it all right there in the rough center. And then I'm going to take my little bow. And I'm gonna pull it open, and there we go. And then you can obviously play with that. That's what's so wonderful about this ribbon. I love this ribbon. Hey, stamp it up if you're listening. More ribbon with wires for those of us that are bow challenged. And then give that a little snip. Okay, uh, to be quite honest, you guys, this would be, to me, this would be okay right like it is. You could call it good right there. Decorate it, especially if you were putting in like a cupcake top. You know how they make muffin tops? Make it a cupcake top with a spooky Halloween themed top. You wouldn't even need to cover that. But we're going to because, uh, you know, I've got my stuff and I want to play some more. Yes, the only thing spooky was her cleavage. How did she stay in that dress? Now I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one of these chicken coop wire elements and that's kind of gonna be our starting point. I'm gonna need some snippy snips. And I'm just gonna give this a little cut like this and I'm not gonna be terribly precise. You know, terribly precise is not actually my thing. So we're just gonna cut and see what we get here. And I'm gonna cut a little bit there like that. Okay. We're just gonna put it like that with a little bit of liquid glue. Does the wire ribbon mess up my scissors? Um, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it mess up my scissors. I suppose it could if I cut it all the time, but I don't, you know, it's not like I use it every day and cut pieces and pieces and yards and yards. So I suppose it could kind of dull my scissors if if it thought about it all right we're gonna put that there and give that a little dab all right let's see what else I've got here to decorate with I've got a pearlized doily and I've got some ooh that's good right there let's get rid of the doily might not need that I do kind of like that though oh let's do that and I've got a second one of those, and we're gonna do, oh yeah. And look, here's the, this is from the DSP. That's just, uh, used a die cut um, from the cauldron framelits, used one of the dies and cut out the witch. And I'll put her on there like that. So I'm just doing a dry fit right now to see if I like it. And if I don't, I won't use it, cause you know, that's the way that cookie crumbles. And I've got a, I've got a broom that I stamped and cut out earlier. And I decided to use a cauldron that was of purpleness. Cause you know, she's all about, because she's all about coordination. No, that doesn't work, okay. Do we want that? I don't know, what do you guys think? Do we want the, the hat? Maybe the hat's too much. I'm gonna look again at my comments and see if anybody's telling me what I should do with this. What do you think? Anybody's think? Take the hat out. Okay, yep, the hat is out. No hat. Okay, I believe. Jean, don't be mean. 
don't be mean. We can't put dimensionals because you'll see it on the back. So, you know, we're not going to do dimensionals. I don't know how am I going to make a card without dimensionals. Maybe I can put some dimensionals right there. Okay, so no hat. That's unfortunate because it's really cute. How about the hat with the frogs? Like that. No? Okay. All right, we're going to just do this. What do you think about the doily? Should I add the doily? Do we think I need the doily? 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 Doily, stay or do I go? Okay, which to the left? Cauldron to the right. I heard that one. No doily, no hat. Amy, 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 you don't like any embellishments. Okay, the doily's gone. The hat is gone. Cauldron, witch. What do you think? Add the broom. Can she have her broom? What do you think? No doily? Okay, the doily's out. No, no. I see lots of no's. Then I see a yes. I'm going to need more, people. I'm going to need more. No what? No yes what? Yes broom. Got it. Hat on the inside behind the witch. Oh, you mean on the other side? Ah, maybe. We'll see how that looks. You like this one, Aaliyah? Broom in the witch's hand? Yes, broom. No doily, broom next to witch. Needs cat too. I can do a cat. I got, I have cat, I have cat capability. Do we need the cat? Should I get the cat out? Hang on, let me get the cat out. Is the cat gonna be black? Should the cat be black? I think the cat should probably be black. Where are you, kitty cat? Okay, here we go. Now, let me find something with which to stamp, as in a block, and some black, and something with on, on which to stamp. Here's a piece of, here's some Whisper White left over. Let's do this. And probably Kitty needs to be gray. How about she get, he be gray? We'll do a little coloring. All right. And don't be saying anything, you guys. No, I cannot color and watch comments. A gray kitty seems good. And then we'll take, we'll give him a, some little pink ears and some granny apple green eyeballs. Aw, he's so cute, he's just so cute. And bats, oh look at that, I have some bats. No cat, Rosie says no cat. Lenny says bats. We got no cat. We got bats. Hang on. Let me. I'm cutting the cat. I've colored the cat. Now I'm cutting the cat. And then I have a bat. Ah! <laughs> you see where I'm going there, people? I've got this whole rhyme thing going like crazy. It's amazing. All right. Thank God there's a cat die so that I don't have to fussy cut said cat, which would be hard for me to do. All right. Oh, now I've got that darn song in my head. Because it's all about the bass, about the bass. All right. So is the cat sitting here, maybe? And are the bats flying there? What do you think? Run, kitty, run! Cat, yes. Put the kitty in the cauldron. That is not funny, Patricia. <laughs> Broom on the left of the witch. Okay. Like so. Like that, maybe. Let's see what we got here. All right. 
how about this? Get get down there, little cat. Little catiaticus. There you go. What you think? What you think? Bat in the top right corner. Can't see the webs. They're there. Look. They're there. You can definitely see the webs. Bat upper right. No cat. I'm way late. We'll have to watch recording. Yes. Just glue it all on one top of the other and call it good. They will only care about the donut anyway. I'm going with this right here, people. This is it. This is the design right there. All right. So let's get a little glue going. And we'll glue down our webs. These are not the interwebs. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Like that. See, I would never give this to Amy Kunder because she would just rip it open with no regard to the thought and time that went into it just to get to the donut. All she would care about is the donut because that's how she rolls. Looking for the chocolate, always looking for the chocolate. I'm just saying, that is how she rolls. You should have seen her on the cruise. I mean, she was like cruising the dessert aisle always. It was almost embarrassing. It was, I mean, you know, I, not, I only know because I was right behind her, but that is not important right now. Are you saying something bad about me now, Amy? Are you? Are you? You are, aren't you? You are, huh? I know you are. I wonder how much you guys will get done next weekend if you debate everything you make. That's true. We're not going to do that because they're already pre-made. We don't usually design by committee because we all know how quickly committees get things done. Here we go. Put a little bit of glue on the back of the cauldron and put him right there, like so. And we may pick this up and give it a little squish. Like that, there we go. And then it's time for Le Witch. Which witch should we use? Let's use this witch. <laughs> oh, I'm killing myself. Okay, there we go. And we'll put that there like that. And then we'll give her her broom, her broom. I'm gonna give her her broom. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And then the kitty who is going on this now since I cut him out. And he's sitting right in front of her toe like that. And there we have our Halloween box. What you think, guys? You like it? Let me put a little, that's driving me batty. <laughs> See what I did there, driving me batty? There we go, I'm gonna stick that right down. Okay, now you could add a sentiment if you wanted, but I think it's relatively obvious this is for Halloween, don't you? I don't think sentiment is required. Not one dimensional, I know, I know. It's kind of, it's, well, it's unfortunate, really. I don't think I like it. I don't I don't even like it now. I probably will just throw this away because it doesn't have a dimensional on it. Not one dimensional anywhere. Not even one. I hate it. Okay. So, now tonight you guys have learned how to do spritzing and this is kind of fun because you can still see the modeled effect. Um, I used half water and half 70% isopropyl alcohol and just spritz until you're happy with it. And you can let it dry on its own or you can use the, the low setting, the number one heat setting with your heat tool to help it along a little bit. And then put your box together with some glue dots um, on this front flap and on these two inside flaps so that you can keep it together. And then you can decorate it as you will. Two inches by four and an eighth are the mats and then one and seven eighths by four inches for your DSP or in the case of this one more cardstock that has been embossed and sponged all right so two different boxes and you look at how different the colors look see I really kind of let this one blend together and get a more folly look and then this one I think is a little more Halloweeny although I'm gonna tell you straight up I like this one better like that color better and I think I do I'm gonna have to try um 
coloring this with crumb cake and then spritzing with soft suede because I think that would look like a leather box. I really do. All right, guys, I hope you've had a good time. And I think we're going to call it a night. So I hope I will see you next week. Um, I am going to attempt to do a video on Sunday evening, even though um, we'll get home on Sunday. But I think I'll be able to do it because um, I already know what we're going to do next Sunday evening for our video. All right, you guys, I appreciate you taking the time. And we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful week. Bye.